Yo, 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 we should be going live in just a bit. Ah, I sent out the email notification a little bit late. But it's okay because we are on and we are going to get things done and talk really quickly about flipping cars to profit. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for getting on today. Um, I really appreciate it. We are on time, 10 o'clock, well, <laughs> 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Welcome to the Flipping Cars for Profit channel. I, uh, I want to make it exciting for you, put some golden nuggets and gems in here for you to take with you and put to work for you tomorrow when you go out and start hunting for deals and uh, and making money flipping cars. What's going on? Yes, absolutely. You are welcome. Now, uh, usually when we start doing these, it takes about five, ten minutes for people to start getting on the call and start, you know, creating a conversation here. But how many of you in here like the headline of this live stream, right? I remember I wrote, I, I read a book a long time ago it was by Donald Trump called The Art of the Deal, right? And in there, he always stresses that you make money on the buy, right? You make money on the buy, not on the sell, because you know that if you secured a good deal, you're always going to make money. You don't have to worry about selling it because you'll know, you know you have a buyer, even if you have to blow it out the door at a cheap price, you'll still make profit on it, okay? That's when you know you have a good deal, is when you could say to yourself, yeah, I wanna get 5,000 for the car, but if I had to blow it out, if I had to make it a no-brainer deal and just get rid of it for 4,000, I would still make 500 profit, right? That's a good feeling. Would you guys agree? Would you guys agree that, you know, if you had a car and you knew that, you knew you could at least get four grand for it? What's going on? Tomorrow, like it was such a good deal at four grand, tomorrow, it's just there's no stress on yourself, right? You know there's money in the bank. So that's how you want to buy. You want to buy so... When you got the deal, it's like you're not worried. It's just money in the bank, and that's how I buy. And that's how you have to learn how to buy and search for deals. And yeah, you know, you may not find the deal right away. It may take you a week. Sometimes it'll take you two weeks. Sometimes it'll take you three weeks. But in those in that, you know, taking up to three weeks, building up to three weeks. On that third week, you may run into two, three, four deals, like back to back. That's happened to me many times. And you've just got to have the capital, the cash, or the investor partners, whatever, to have some money available for you so you can snatch them up, right? Then you're in business. Then you keep searching for deals. And then maybe next week you'll find another one. Maybe it'll take another two weeks to find another one. But then you got all these cars you're sitting on that's money in the bank for you. And you could sit on them longer because you have a little bit more inventory. You have two, three cars you're sitting on. Yeah, you could wait a couple of weeks before you sell one because you got three on rotation on ads, right? You're getting at, you know, people calling. And that's another really important topic that I can't stress enough is how to structure your ads when you're selling cars, okay? I would say... Apart from securing the deal, which is number one, getting a good deal, number two is getting an uh, ad so good in a video com combination, the way I show you how to do in my course, so good that people are like, damn, I got to check this car out. You know, this, this car looks like a great deal. I mean, look, it's got meaty tires, the engine's clean, it has pretty decent mileage, you know, there's a structure, a formula to structure your ad. So when people look at it, they're like, damn, I got to give this guy a call. I got to, we got to check this out. Somebody's going to buy this thing, right? Especially if you have it at a good deal, at a price competitively. 
and you know you're still making money on it, that's the holy grail. That's when you'll sell a car the next day. I've done that many, many times, right? You get a car and you know that if you sit on it, you could probably make two grand profit, but you just want to blow it out. You know, just make the money, move on to the next. You'll make 1500 by selling it tomorrow, right? And again, it's all preference. It's all your own business model. What do you want to do? Do you want to move fast and rotate, right? Like that's kind of how I like to move. You know, I have a, a quote that says money loves speed, right? The faster you get things done, the faster you put things into action, the, the more quicker things are going to roll. Or you could just sit on them a little longer, right? R sell less cars like what my dad used to. That was my dad's model was ask top price, somebody will buy it, right? He'll probably sit on a car for maybe a month, sometimes two, sometimes six. I remember he was trying to sell his 54 Chevy, right, restored. I think he was sitting on it for like a year. But after, I says, Dad, why don't you just get rid of it for like 15 grand? Why don't you just get rid of it? He's like, nah, it's worth 18. It's worth 18. You know, I won't take less than that, blah, 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 blah. And one day he was at his apartment. He's when he moved, he sold his house as an apartment. Um, you know, he was kind of narrowing down, retiring and stuff. He had it parked outside of his apartment. It was on the ground floor. A lady walked, he had a for sale sign on it. A lady walking by saw it. She says, I want it for 18.5. He had 18.5 on the window. She says, my husband had one of these when he was younger. I want the car for my husband. She, she bought it full price from him. So, you know, it took a while, but he didn't mind because he drove it on the weekends. People got, honked at him, gave him looks, you know. Pretty cool. You guys liking this? So that's what I wanted to stress um, on this message for you was as long as you buy right, you don't have to worry about selling because there will always be a buyer. All right, so let's get a quick uh, location count. I, I recognize a couple of you in here, but um, let's get a quick location count or, or a location shout out. Wherever you're from, type in the chat quickly down below. Type it in where you're from. I want to shout out some locations around the world. And also, if this is your first time joining, just say first time. If this is multiple, just put in multiple. So I kind of have an idea of you know, the audience, you guys in here, what's going on. Um, A-Rod, I know you're in here all the time. Catherine, you're, you're in here all the time. We got Dallas, Texas, Austin, Iowa. Come on, shout out some names. Callie, come on, shout out some names. You know, it takes time for people to get on here. About 20 minutes in, we'll get a lot more people in here. So it might be a little early for me to to ask for a, to do some shout outs. Um, Pennsylvania, watch these before, not live though. Awesome, I'm glad you could make it on live today. It's pretty exciting when we got people on live. First timer from Louisiana. Awesome, Louisiana. What kind of southern food we got down there? Uh, what, 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 what's on the menu today? Uh, what, what do we got, Corey? We got some, we got some southern what do they call that? That that mix that that uh, southern rice they make the paella. They got that all kinds of shrimps and and uh, crawfish, crayfish, you know, all those crazy dishes. I I was actually in New Orleans uh, not too long ago, I maybe mean, about a year ago, hanging out there and uh, you know checking the whole scene in. You got they eat crocodile down there. They got all that stuff down there, right? Crawfish, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Louie, I used to flip a lot more, but right now I've been traveling so much lately. I'm in Japan right now. Uh, but I wanted to give back to the community. Gumbo. There you go, Corey. Gumbo. And that's the problem with me. I'm allergic to shellfish, so I can't eat any of that. Like, I took a bite once and my throat started, like, getting itchy. Awesome. Dwayne, thank you for getting on today. I am so happy that you can get on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Miami, Florida, first time. Miami, Florida. So recently, I haven't been flipping much because I've been traveling a lot. I actually bought and sold the car in Mexico while I was there a couple of months ago. 
and uh, I'm gonna be going back again soon. I maybe I bought a car here in Japan. I'm having it shipped back to Dallas, and I may be coming back here in the next six months or so, and I'm gonna be actually be buying a car here to use. So I'll document that process and how it is buying a car in Japan. What kind of car we're gonna get? Um, how many of you guys would like to see that? Like some of the, you know, I've been taking some awesome footage here in Japan. Uh, just like with the cars and it's it's a very different you know we people drive on the left side of the road you know and uh, it's it's different it's like uh, Australia I guess in New Zealand right people drive on the left side of the road um, so yeah I got some pretty cool footage I just have to give it to my video guy so he can make a cool video for you and uh, and we'll get it up here soon like I got tons of footage um, and that's that's you know all coming little by little Awesome. I'm very happy that you guys are on here today. What car did you buy and sell in Mexico? So I had a little Chevy uh, Cobalt or whatever you call it, Col Cobalt that I bought and sold. And I also have a Toyota Camry there that I bought. And I actually still have that car that <coughs> there in Mexico. Let me get a drink. One second. Yeah, so so the cars in Mexico, man, are really, really pieces of shits. When you're buying in the two to three thousand dollar range, you're really getting pieces of shits because people in Mexico, I noticed in that price range, they beat the hell out of their cars. They do not take care of the cars. So about ninety percent of the cars that I was looking at, um, in Mexico, the interiors were freaking beat, beat, ugly, beat, stink, like bad. Like you wouldn't even want to freaking buy the car. That's how bad they are. Like the cars in America, people take care of them a little bit more. In Mexico, when you're dealing with the, the lower class, um, and I don't want to insult anybody here. I'm just speaking the truth, okay? So, I'm, you know, for anybody you in here from Mexico, if you're getting offended, Please don't because I'm just speaking the truth of my, from my experience and what I've saw with my own eyes. Um, you know, the lower class people, the cars are beat, piece of shit, and, you know, you don't get really good cars at that price range. You have to spend more like $5,000 US and up to get anything decent looking. And uh, and that's a lot of pesos, you know, when you compare. it's it's Right now, it's for $1, you'll get 17 pesos. So 18, 18 and a half right now. Alan, first time. I was in Okinawa for two and a half years. Brother, Corey, I, my mother is from Okinawa. So I have Okinawan blood, believe it or not. So, and I was in Okinawa when I was a kid, but I haven't been there in, in probably 20 years. I, I really want to go there. So probably next time we come back to Japan, I'll be heading down to, to Okinawa. Yeah, I have one tuner. Right now, I have a 97M edition Mazda Miata, which is pimp, by the way. Have you seen it? It's it's really nice. It's a nice little car, and um, you know, I have I, I want to I want to start tuning it up. You know, doing something with the engine. Suspension's all done. Um, body and paint's all done. Interior's pretty clean, all original. So the next thing is to do something with the engine. I'm Mexican, but you're dead on. Victor, thank you. Hey, I love the Mexican people. I love them. I love the Mayan people. They're really nice people. But then you get those that are not very nice, right? In, in all cultures, in all nationalities, you're going to get good people and not so good people. But, you know, all the experiences I've had with the Mexicans, great people. They think I'm Mexican when I go down there. Everybody speaks to me in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. Poquito Espanol. You know, very poquito. I could probably order something. And ask for the check, you know, at, at the restaurant. But that's probably pretty much it. <laughs> uh, okay. So, let's get into to live Q&A. So, for everybody watching here, um, in the beginning of the, the, the show here, we kind of talked about how getting the deal is the most important part. And I cover this in my F1 formula on how to really get the deal the mindset that you have to be in, and you know, really how to secure everything. That's the main thing. Once you got the deal, 
It's structuring the ad and selling it. Okay, so rewind later on, watch that part. Now we're gonna get into some quick q and I just wanna get a little bit more involved with you a little earlier this time uh, because I am on a time limit today. I, I actually have to leave really within 30, you know, at 10.30 my time. So which is about 15, 20 minutes from now, I gotta cut this show short. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's get to some Q and A here and we will be, we'll be, so Lewis says, what's better buying from auctions or off the street? Well, Lewis, if you're just getting started, right? I urge you to learn the game in the street. It's easier because you could just find deals off the street. You can negotiate with people. You could inspect the cars thoroughly because you're going to be there. You could talk with the owner. You could look at it. Um, you could make a deal, you could pay cash, boom, right there, done, get a car, go home, done. With auctions, you need to be a little bit more experienced because they don't give you uh, viewing time or inspection time like they used to. Before, they used to let you go in the auction area, go out on the field, look in the cars, you know, people used to, I used to steal a couple of stereos. Hey, this is when I was young, okay, 20, 21 years old, he's going, grab a stereo. People used to do that, and that's, people used to take parts. They used to go see a BMW that they needed a computer chip, right? They would go there with some tools in their pocket, take the part out, and leave. I mean, that's, yeah, and I took a stereo maybe once or twice. And this is when I was young. I don't do shit like that anymore. I mean, you know, when you're young, you do, you do, you do stuff. But at auctions, hey, I'm not gonna lie, man. I've done it. I've, I've, I've done all that shit. Okay, I don't continue to do it. Uh, look, I've done that so much. Your dad a Marine? No, my dad's not a Marine. My dad actually is born and raised, born and raised in New York, moved to Hawaii because that's the furthest place uh, to get away from his ex-wife. Uh, my mom moved to Hawaii from Okinawa and they met up and they had me back in 82. So non-military, but you know, it seems like a military marriage, right? My, my Okinawan mom and my New York Italian dad, right? Who could have been a Marine, right? <laughs> So, yeah, so with auctions, you have to be careful because most times the insiders at the auction will pull cars to the side for themselves to get the good deals and they'll leave the scraps for the, for the rest of the public. That's what happens. So unless you're connected with the office staff, right, you're really not going to get, you could get good deals because there, there is a, a lot of deals out there. There's a lot of cars. And they can't get every single one. But do know that the best deals go to the people in-house. Right? They got the connections. Think about it. Right? If you worked there, you knew people working there and your mom had a connection. Your mom, if your mom was the teller at the auction place and she hears what's going on. You know, it's, it's a gang. Right? Every office, every community is a gang. They want to take care of themselves. Right? I mean, it's the truth. Look at Donald Trump and his whole family, right? They're all backing each other up. They're taking care of each other to try to get to the next level. I mean, it's logical. We do that as a family, right? If I was working inside of an auction house as an insider, I knew the manager. I knew everybody. We were cool. We had barbecues over there once in a while. You know, and my brother was like, Tony, hook me up with a car. Yo, John, you know, what's up? Of course, insider deals go through all the time. It's all about your network, right? You know, they say successful people build networks, poor people go get a job, right? So you have to switch your mentality and start thinking connections. So that's why I urge you to go out, make friends with tow people, tow companies. Just go there and say, hey, you know, I buy and sell cars for profit if you, you know, or if you know a friend. The best way to get into a network is through an introduction. We kind of paused here a little bit on the, on the live stream. So I will just play it out for a second until we we go live again. It just it froze up here, so I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say too much and have you guys miss it. So I will 
pause and delay and lag. You guys, okay, here we go. Here we go. It looks like we're back on. Well, I named this stream Donald Trump because, check the title of this thing, Flipping Cars, You Make Money on the Buy. That was quoted. You Make Money on the Buy was quoted by Donald Trump in his book, The Art of the Deal, that he published back in the 80s. Okay? And he was talking to he was talking about real estate, how when you buy a building, okay, you make money on the buy. And I just brought that in and, and weaved it into buying and selling cars for profit because it's the same exact mentality that you want to use. All right, so that's why we used I used Donald Trump is because he said you make money on the buy uh, in his book, um, The Art of the Deal. Okay, good. So it didn't stop on your end. Yeah, so I just wanted to, sometimes it freezes up here on me and it says live, but my video is frozen, so I don't want to keep talking and, and you guys miss out on stuff. Yeah, awesome, Lewis. Victor, how much would you value a 99 Accord sedan, good condition, 175K California title, new tires? Well, number one, I would check the blue book. I don't have one with me offhand. You could even go online and check retail. Um, private party good. That'll give you an idea. Uh, the also way to check is to just go on your local Craigslist in that area, type in 99 Honda Accord and compare prices. See what other people are selling them for. Yep, absolutely. Impala. I live three hours from Chicago. What's the best way to get there and pick them up? Well, like I said, you can have people meet you halfway. Um, and I have a way where you can get a couple of free tow truck, tow truck uh, hauls every year. Catherine, have you, ever, have you invested in my course yet? Because I talk all about that within the course. Yeah, I mean, you could you you could rent the trailer if you want to, or I have a, a little method that I use where you can get a free tow up to two hundred and fifty miles, a couple times a year, and that little secret tip is revealed inside the course. How long should okay, Victor? I check Craigslist. Okay, it depends. It all depends on your price points. Okay, and you know, it all depends on the price point. Sometimes it, it, you could sell a car the next day. Sometimes it'll take you a week. Sometimes it'll take you two weeks. Sometimes you'll be sitting on a car for a month, right? Uh, on average, I like to get rid of my cars within two weeks, ideally the first week after posting. What's up, Eric Pierce? This course pays for itself just with that tip and <laughs> awesome. I'm happy you guys like it. Uh, I check Craigslist. Let me see. Hold on. I'm missing. I'm missing something here. I check Craigslist. Uh, uh, Victor, wrong question. How long should this take? Yeah, yeah. So I answered that. Um, how can I check to see if I am a member? Well, Daryl, if you're not a member, you are missing out totally. So to become a member and to get exclusive access to all the stuff that I do, just go here quick and check it out. I don't want to make this a whole sales pitch, but here you go. Okay, so you could you could learn more about that. I have to redo the page. It's a little old looking, so I'm in the process of redoing it. Uh, we're adding a couple new bonuses in there. So whatever you do, whatever you join, you're getting all of that included as well. So don't worry about that. Roberto from New Jersey, you are the best. Thank you, Roberto. Watching from California, shout me out. Saeed, what's up, Saeed? Anyone ever pay with you with funny money? I have never ran into that issue with funny money. <laughs> um, they have little pens that you can get if you're, you know, if you're a little 
wary about stuff like that. You could mark it, mark the dollar bill or the hundred dollar bill. If it if it makes a mark, then it's funny money. If it doesn't, then you're good. Just go on Amazon. They sell those things on Amazon. It's money. Uh, just type in like money pen or something. Fake money pen. Yeah, but I've never had that issue. I usually, I mean, I like to take cash or cashier's check, like a certified check or money order. Those are the three best ways to get payment. Michael Kennedy from the UK. E. Brown, Texas in the house. Gotta love that Texas barbecue. Yeah. All right, so is everybody liking this so far? Give me some quick feedback. If you're liking this, say, yeah, I'm liking it. Be sure to share this with you know, friends and family who are out there who want to learn how to do all of this stuff and want to get on the show and, you know, pick my brain a little bit and, and just, just hang out with the community. It's a great place to interact every, you know, Wednesday night um, and, uh, and, and make it happen, you know? Yeah, counterfeit pen, Mr. Mitchell. Funny money pen. Uh... Have you ever hired someone to go pick up a car for you and trail them back? Yes, I have. I have only if they were like hundreds of miles away. Like I've bought a couple of cars um, off eBay where I had to have them just trucked over. So that usually costs anywhere from 400 to 800. So you got to make sure you're getting a uh, a good you know a good deal or a car that's worth. Like me, what did I get? I I bought a the Mazda Miata I got was a couple hundred miles away. What state was it? Uh, what state did I buy that car from? I don't remember what state I bought it from, but it was like 500, 400 miles away, five hundred miles away, and I paid like four or five hundred bucks to have them put it on a flatbed and bring it over to my house. So you know, it all depends. So that's a pretty good deal. It's it's all it's all up to you what you want to do with that, you know. Are you going are you going are you going to save this session for YouTube? Yes, this is going to be uploaded to YouTube uh, as soon as we go offline with this. Virginia in the house. Virginia. You know, actually my car might have been Virginia. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay, so last-minute questions. Let's do a, a, a little wrap-up really quickly. We'll wrap it up within the next five minutes. Um, I got other things to do on my clock today, and, um, you know, it's, it's been a busy week for me. So just want to – I just, you know, I wanted to get on here quickly to just say what's up to all of you people, and, uh, and we'll go. So I joined when you were writing on the chalkboard. It's been a while. When When – were you doing this from Mexico? Wow, that the chalkboard in Mexico, that was a few years ago, uh, 2013. Um, you know, I was in Mexico not too long ago, three, two, th two months ago I was in Mexico. Now we're in Japan, and actually, like I said earlier, I bought a, a K car from Japan. I'm having it shipped back to Dallas. Uh, my main home base is in Dallas. Okay, so I'm having it shipped back to Dallas, and then I am moving back here in probably March of next year and um, we are gonna I'm gonna video we're gonna have a whole video series on how I buy a car and get it registered here in Japan pretty cool I mean I know most of you guys are probably not gonna end up doing that but I just wanted to show a video how many of you guys you think that'd be cool like buying a car oh the, the cool thing I like about Japan cars are there are a lot of different makes and models like models especially that are not sold in the US or you know anywhere else but Japan and there's Japan versions of those and you get different cars yep yellow plate cars they call them K cars um, I'm, I actually bought one I'm having it shipped to Dallas um, but we're gonna be getting a regular car uh, here and we're I'm also gonna be getting a K car here so I might be having two cars here I'm not sure we're gonna start off with a bigger one a regular plated car because the K cars are really small and when you're in them, you know, they're most of them are like 650 cc, right? They're basically a three-cylinder engine. Um, they're they're great for getting around town, going here, going there. 
But when you're in it, like with your family, it feels cheap, right? Noise, noisy inside a little bit, little wiggly, wobbly on the road. I, I drove one like a week ago and it's like really tiny and really weird. They look cool as hell. Like I love small cars, but like a mini drives a lot more. It's a lot more solid feeling in a, in a 2000 mini than versus a, a K car. There's tires on a K car literally that, that wide. You know, 14 inch rims, um, three cylinder, so you really got no go. You know, suspension feels a little cheap. It just feels cheap being in a K car from when you're used to being in a regular car. You guys know what I'm saying? So that's the difference. Yeah, I would like to check out some of those auctions in Japan as well. Um, and also, they got the fish auctions too. That's pretty cool in Tsukiji. Um, yeah, Dwayne, there are a few books that, that was really good. I forgot the guy's name. His name was Joe. Let me go on Amazon for you quick and see if I could find this book for you. Joe, besides my book, selling cars, Joe the Salesman, I think his name was, let's see, no. I don't have it. I don't know it top of my hand, but top of my head. But when I do, I will I will let you know by email. All right. I don't know it offhand right now. There was a good book. I read it a while ago, but it's like I lost it right now. It's it's tip of my tongue. Um, how long? How low below retail should you should we buy as low as possible? Always low as possible. Did you go to auctions when you're flipping a lot of cars? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, I don't I don't flip as much as I used to flip, but I do flip for extra cash, you know, make a couple of extra grand a month. Four, five, six grand a month extra. I mean, why not? Yeah, no problem. And, you know, making an extra two, three thousand dollars a month is duck soup when it comes to this game. Like cash profit, two, three K a month, like that's like you should be you should be doing that like with your eyes closed. And I'm telling you, you follow the strategies I show you in the F1, you will you will achieve that. I mean, I've had guys with no flipping experience go through my course and seriously study it and seriously go through my videos and seriously put to action what I say and they go out to make $30,000, $40,000 their first year in profit after going through the F1 formula. So I know it works, and this is not one person. This is like a lot of people, all right? Um, no, absolutely not. You never want to flip from one source. You want to flip everywhere. I mean, you know, tell, tell people that you're doing it. All right, so what do you think about buying cars in the city and selling them in another city? Uh, there's a shortage here in Austin for low price used cars. Thought about buying. Hey, if you can do it, that's a great idea. Why not? Why not? Yes. Um, right here, Ken. Man, I put the link up earlier. Um, you could actually check this site out right here. It doesn't say much as far as, where the hell is my integration settings? Uh, and one sec here, you could click this. And I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see, this is like a direct 
link to the cart um, where I'm doing this special sale. Just see if this pops up for you. I don't know if this is going to pop up for you guys, but just see if this pops up. You could see kind of like the order page where you could join. Just see. I don't know if this is going to work. Just see if, if that pops any kind of order form up for you. Um, if that doesn't work, then I have another URL. Most people don't have a way to get to auctions. So what other source besides Craigslist and bumping in the deals? Well, we cover multiple other sources. Have you went through the F1 program? Yes or no? Because that's all, like we cover all of that. Uh, Want to go to an auction in the upcoming weeks to see down there, Florida. Auto Trader. Yeah, so I mean, you know, eBay everywhere. Penny Saver. That was like my one of my main sources back in the day. Did that link pull up for you? Guys, did this link come up for you? Do you see an order page where you could join F1 or yes or no? I just want to know if that link is working for you. Because I think it works for me. Right, is that pulling up? Just give me some feedback so I know. The URL is good. All right, so that's where you could join. Um, you're gonna get access uh, to private critiques from me as well. You know, I don't like to do a lot of selling on here, you know? So if you wanna join up, if you wanna check it out, if you wanna learn more, check it out there. Um, also, this is the page where you could learn That's going to take you to an older checkout page, but they both work. So that's where you could learn more about what you're getting in the members area. And the other link you could purchase from if you guys want to join up. Or you could click the order button on that other URL I just gave you and you could join there. It's, it's the same thing. It's like a different shopping cart that we're using. No big deal. But you get once you become a member, you get access to all private videos uh, that will take you step by step on how to get things done. Um, like I said, you know, I got another testimonial a couple weeks ago on my YouTube channel saying that father and son started and they did over a hundred thousand dollars in profit their first year after going through my course. No BS. I don't know. That sounds a little extreme, but the guy was like, Tony, I'm not BSing you. Your course is freaking amazing. We did over a hundred thousand in profit after going. So to me, that's like, wow. Cause my, the, the, the top guy below him was like, I think he did like $55,000 in one year after going through the program in profit. But this kid, you know, father and son combo said they did over $100,000 in profit, no BS. So I don't know, you know, it's not verified, but that's, it's on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to look, I don't know what video it was, but he, they left a comment on there. I was like, wow, dude, that's awesome. So he's supposed to be sending me some more info and, and like proof of that. I don't know what he's going to do. But he's like, Tony, I'm not BSing. So anyway, um, I want to thank you guys for getting on. Um, send me an email personally uh, for next week's topic, what you guys want to cover ne next week as a main. And then we will get here and we'll, we'll like, I'll pump you up. You know, I'll pump you up for the week. And you know, part of my motivation here for you is to pump you up, to get started, to go out there and start searching for deals and just get a good deal. Once you get a good deal, right, money's in your pocket. You could sleep well at night knowing that you could blow it out tomorrow if you had to, right? It's better investing three grand in a car than to have that three grand sit in your bank account and collect zero interest, right? Because right now banks are giving you crap on your money. It's better to put that three grand into a car, right? Yeah, it's going to take a couple of hours of your time, find a deal, blah, 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 blah. And to make 500 and turning that 3,000 to 3,500, then to let it sit in your bank. Would you guys agree? Because banks right now, they're not giving you shit with your money. You have to constantly think, how can I make my money grow? How can I make my money make more money? And once, and flipping cars for profit is a perfect way of doing this because you could basically just roll your money. Right, start with a thousand 
end up with 10, 20 grand at the end of the year, right? Take that 10, 20 grand, invest it in another business. You don't have to buy and sell forever. It's a great way to make extra money, all right? That's how you should look at it. <clears throat> if you want to get serious and do a dealership, which I don't recommend because it's, it's more out-of-pocket expenses for you. You got to go through hoops. You got to jump through hoops with fire around it, right? You're dealing with the state. You got to get your license. Who wants all that BS, right? Stay under the radar. Flip a couple cars a month. Make your money, save your money, and figure out other ways to grow that. I mean, you must have heard me say this before, but the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Seven streams. So flipping cars could be just another way for you to make an extra 20, 30, 40 grand a year, right? Then you take that. Then you learn about Forex. Start playing with a little bit of Forex stuff if you want. Start playing with a little bit of stocks. That's what I do. I play with Forex. I'm actually starting to learn about Forex right now, right? Um, I have, I play with a little bit of stocks. I'm always, I'm always trying to learn new ways of making money, right? You want to have multiple streams of ways of making money. Like I said, I'm publishing a book, right? That we're going to have on Amazon soon. I have plans of putting four or five books on Amazon, right? So that's the way you want to do things. <clears throat> Is your email on your F1 website? Yes. It's the support email. So you could just go, it's Tony at how to buy and sell your <clears throat> That comes to us directly. All right. And right now, I don't know how many auto body members in here, but I'm doing a birthday sale right now. And you could actually uh, get my auto body course. I know one of you guys in here were like saying combo. So <clears throat> yeah, I will do a special deal, but we're running a special right now, my auto body course because of my birthday. I bought your F1 course back in 2009. The course is great and it works. In your opinion, what is the best way to go out in 16? Selling low price cars or higher price cars? If you have the money, I would diversify and do both, right? Because you'll always get that crowd who wants to have a nicer car. So you could go up into the 10,000 and above market, right? And this is where you have to actually start learning your market. Start seeing what people like in your market. And, you know, if you see a deal, scoop it like a, a nice BMW M3, you know, people are crazy about it. And it's also good about niching down. So I, you know, I actually have more that I'm writing about in a side little notepad that I want to give away to you uh, F1 guys as well. Um, so I'm working on new and updated content. So it's just, you know, I'm doing multiple things at once right now. So that's why it's taking a little longer for me to get things out. <clears throat> but um, yeah, and you guys are always welcome to come on live and talk to me here. But what I would do is diversify, okay? Have, have some deals in the lower area, have some deals in the higher area, and, uh, and you, you, know, you roll out cars that way. Because right now I'm sitting on a freaking badass BMW M3. I got it for a little over 13 grand. Um, I know if I sit on it for another five years it's going to be a classic collectible it's 2000 it's a 2000 with only 38,000 miles on it <clears throat> one owner bmw z3 m edition clean as hell um in 10 years that car is going to be worth 25 35 grand depending on the market you know and i paid 13 for it so it's money in the bank if i want to get rid of it tomorrow i could probably get 16 5 17 5 for it easy but it's not like I need to liquidate the money. You know, you also got to think of, you know, all of you guys out there, you also have to think of diversifying your money, right? Don't keep all of your money in the bank, right? Have a little bit of money in here, a little bit of money there, a little bit of money in cars. This way, if something ever happens to the economy, the market, you got things, you got other tangible assets where your money's in, right? Because right now we're at a real uh, unpredictable market in the economy, in the world, all this crazy shit happening, you know, fucking, you know, ISIS and all this. And, you know, I don't want to get too deeply into it, but it's important in this day and age to diversify your assets, your money and currency. That's why I'm starting to do things in Japan. Um, all cash deals are fine. All cash deals. I don't get into financing. That's a whole nother game. I don't like to go in areas where I don't know much about. I like to go all cash. 
or certified checks, people with money. <clears throat> hey, thank you for the uh, happy birthday. Today's my birthday, guys. <laughs> Today's my birthday. Well, in Japan, it's my birthday. It's the 21st here in Japan. For you guys, it's still the 20th. Hey, congratulations. We have a F1 member. Somebody just joined F1. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Let me shout out a name here. I don't see the name here. I think I'll be able to see it if I go on my email. William Baker. Somebody just joined the F1. Congratulations, William. Um, so yeah, man. So that's about it. You guys, I hope you guys gained some nuggets in here. You guys enjoy the show so far. Um, so for all of you newbies out there, what's up, William? Congratulations. Um, and I think you made a very smart decision because you invested in yourself. You know, it's different when you get free information, right? It's just free, so you don't value it as much. You don't put it to action. But when you actually pay for something and you're invested in something, you got some skin in the game, people are 90% more prone to taking action and getting things done. So, and that's a fact. Do some research on it, right? If you pay for something, you got skin in the game, it's like paying for coaching right? If you pay for coaching, you're, you're damn straight. You're going to actually listen to what the guy's telling you and put it to action. And that's when you get results is when you invest in yourself financially, you put some skin in the game, you take it seriously and you make shit happen. Hey, thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys coming on. Um, I can't wait for, for to see you guys next week. Tomorrow we'll be doing a quick learn auto body show like this, talking about some auto body stuff. And, um, and all that stuff. Um, and, and that's about it. So share this with your friends and family. I really appreciate it for you guys coming on. Um, I enjoy connecting with you all. You guys are like my extended family. I mean, you know, we all have the same interest here, right? We're all car people trying to get to the next level, trying to make some money. And, you know, I hope that, you know, I was able to motivate you to to have a better day today, to sleep better today, to sleep with a, with a better dream, um, to wake up tomorrow energized and excited to get things going and take it to the next level. All right? So I'll see you guys on next week. Thanks for joining. Please like the video, share it with some friends, some special friends that you care about, and, um, and I will see you on next week. All right? Peace out, people. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. I'll see you later. Peace out.